A question here from Andy from UK. Uh, it's about carbon bikes, lightweight carbon bikes. Are they safe for touring? Uh, Sample pictures. Go to my Instagram. Go to Duran Riders at Duran Riders on Instagram. You see me and Natasha here. We're cruising around Malaysia, and we've got our lightweight Chinese carbon bikes, and we put racks on them, and we've got race wheels on there. I've got a set of Maverick Serums I got cheap, and Natasha's got a pair of Durace C24 wheels, and so they're holding up fine. So it depends. Yeah. Can you use a lightweight carbon racing bike for touring? The answer is yes, but it depends. It depends what sort of riding you're going to do. Are you going to take your road bike on gravel adventures where you're just like smashing down single track fire roads and stuff like that? You know, then you're probably going to break stuff, probably going to break spokes, you're going to get a lot of tire blowouts. You're not going to crack your frame. These frames are quite strong. If you're dropping off stuff though, if you're riding down stairs, on your road bike, then yeah, you're probably gonna crack it. You're probably gonna crack it. You probably can't quite crack your handlebars first. So it, it's, it depends. What sort of rider are you? Are you real lucky? Are you a real fresher? Are you gonna load up 30 kilos of watermelons or water or whatever in your lug luggage and put that in your panty rack? And then you're gonna be sprinting out the saddle, you know, chasing down trucks down the highway and just like swagging that bike, rah, just muscling around. You're gonna be doing that, then I'd say, you're probably gonna have some problems with lightweight stuff, all right? Lightweight means not as strong. But again, it, gets, it depends, it depends. So my frames, I don't recommend people use them who weigh more than 100 kilos. You can safely do that, but you're gonna find these lightweight climbing bikes are gonna flex more, and you're probably not gonna get that pure riding experience that you want. I would recommend one of my aero frames which is the aero bike's always heavier because it's got more carbon and it's gonna be stiffer, all right? So it's gonna be better for those larger riders who put out a lot of power and can twist things. If you're a you know, skinny climber like me, you're okay. But if you're more of a powerhouse, if you're on the gas, you're, you know, you, or you're just a big dude, seven foot, or just, you know, or just heavy, heavy set, then you're gonna push out more power, more torque, and a lightweight frame, despite the marketing hype, is gonna fucking noodle, man, you know? And that's not a safety issue, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna snap it. There's nobody in the world who could just get on a car bike and snap it in today's modern carbon era. That just doesn't happen. Back in the day, the old look frames or you know, some of the bonding might come undone, but no one's been riding along and just failed a frame. What happens is people crash a frame, put a big crack in it, don't even notice it, and then they're sprinting and then the carbon stays snaps. But that wasn't from the carbon frame, that was from a crash prior. Aluminium can fail the world and then pop. Seen that happen, people crash in sprints, but a carbon bike these days isn't just gonna catastrophically fail. If you're getting it from one of these reputable Chinese online sellers, such as myself now, or from Trek, who make in China, Chinese bikes, uh, Cannondale, Cervelo, Pinarello, Nove, all these companies using Chinese factories, OEM factories, who are making high quality, lightweight carbon stuff out of China and you know, we're high quality control. So I don't recommend buying these counterfeit frames. Like if you want an S-Works bike, I would recommend buy the S-Works bike. I don't recommend going onto Alibaba and buying a, a fake S-Works or a fake Pinarello. It may be okay. It might be totally okay. It might even be strong. Who knows? No one knows. I wouldn't vouch for that. I would vouch for the companies that I use. If you, go, if you want a safe Chinese frame, go to duranod.com. That's the brand I'm using. And why am I using that brand? Because I'm Michael, who are you making company frames for? Are oh, you making frames for that? Big online seller in the UK. Oh, you're making frames for that team. Oh, okay. I oh, use an open mold source frame design that thousands of people have been using on all the forums over the years. And I'm buying them in bulk and I can sell them super cheap with a minimal margin margin for myself. Minimal, minimal margin. Custom painted bikes are 699. No one's doing that. No one can do that. Well, no one wants to do that because there's not much money in it. But I like to be able to bring a, a safe product. First of all, it's got to be safe and quality. It's gotta be stiff enough for high performance riding. Will it be stiff enough for the 100 kilo boom, staunch hench? I would say no. You might ride it, you might be 100 kilos, go, oh, this is fine, okay. I would say I would go something a bit more 1200, 1500, 1700 gram frame. That's just my opinion. I think lightweight stuff for lightweight riders. It's gonna have a better experience. And uh, so, you know, like, you know, why pay more? Why pay more? Uh, also, on the wheels, I'm using the Mavic Serum SLs which are quite a strong wheel spoke-wise, but again, I'm a lightweight rider, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty smooth on the bike. I don't, I'm not smashing down gutters and just, you know, I'm treating my product with care, and same with Natasha, you know. 
So teaching Natasha how to you know, go off gutters and things like that. The do's and the don'ts. If you want more tips, go to my bike buyer's guide called Lean Body Bible. It's also a bike buyer's guide on there, durinod.com. I hate to be soundsy, but there's a lot of bullshit out there that's being sold or told, and people are getting ripped off money-wise. It's crazy out there. So if you want ultimate strength and you're concerned about durability, then ride a heavier bike. You know, ride a, ride a heavier carbon bike, ride a heavier alloy bike, ride a heavier titanium or bamboo bike. Use a heavier duty rack. Don't use the lightweight stuff if strength is your priority. If you're a real just, oh, you want to charge over the cobblestones. I wouldn't be riding cobblestones in my setup. It's not designed for that. Most of the professional bikes out there in the Peloton for Paru Bay never get used ever again. Or they get, so they get sold to the punters who will use a carb bike like that. But they just, I wouldn't buy one of those bikes because that impact on the cobbles again and again, the crashes and little cracks and stuff can start to form just from the impact, not from the power, but from the impact. So I wouldn't use those products again personally. And so it might be okay for a day, but if you're out there on tour again and again and again, who knows? It's not worth the risk. If you do have an impact failure from just Hitting, hitting large things. That's 800 gram frame isn't designed for cobblestones. Some people might say it is, and I totally disagree. I might be totally wrong, but I'd rather earn the side of caution with my advice than tell people, hey, you're 100 kilos, this is an 800 gram frame that I use and Natasha uses, you'll be totally fine. I don't know, for me, 800 grams and a 100 kilo mass and cobblestones and rough rot, that doesn't, that equation, doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna be honest, and that's what people buy my product or watch my shit. Cause they're like, I can come to Harley, Duran Rider, Harley Johnstone to get the fucking honest opinion, honest experience. I'm not here to overcharge people, sell them bullshit, sell them shit they don't fucking need, whatever. And that's what I'm loved for and what I'm also hated for by some people out there. And hey, that's fine, that's just me. I can't do the whole fake LA smile, I can't do that. Yeah, that's just not me at all. I could never do that. And hey, for some people can, some people have to. They've got drug addictions or, or whatever they do. You know, they're just narcissists or they're just, they want to drive a Porsche or whatever. Good on them. Go for it. Scan people if you want. If you can sleep at night doing that. I can't and I love cycling. I love bringing people into cycling and giving them the best advice. Because you know what? People did that to me 20 years ago. I would go to a bike shop and I'd be like, I want to get these XDR cranks. And they're like, Harley, you're not that fit yet. XDR cranks don't make much difference. The cranks you got now, the Dior LX, they're good enough. Just go out and ride more. Eat more carbohydrate, drink more water. You don't need to bling. You know, and these people just told me straight up. I was like, okay, I respect that. And I go out training with some other you know, pro level riders and they give me some tips and talk about cadence and nutrition and carbohydrates and carbohydrates, and eat more carbs. And so I really respected that. And I, I turned up in shorts and t-shirt and you know, most of them didn't judge me. And so that's why I still have that sort of mentality today. So in terms of touring, go stronger. If, you, if you're if you doubting the strength, then get stronger. If you think you'll need stronger, if you're a heavier rider, wanting to carry heavier loads over heavier terrain, go heavy, go heavy, always go heavy. If you're a lightweight rider, trying to go as fast as possible, you're traveling really light, you're very light when you're moving through traffic and over roads, you're picking pretty smooth stuff, go lightweight. Because heavy, you don't need extra heavy stuff. It's just dead weight. If you're trying to go fast, you want to be as light as possible. All right? Simple as that. So always put safety first, and then go for a ride performance second. Will my ride be enjoyed if I keep breaking down? If I keep breaking spokes? You know, if I keep having punctures from trying to ride lightweight race tires over glassy city terrain or whatever? You know, do I need? hardcore specialized armadillo tubeless tires on dead smooth glass free roads of thailand no you don't do i need them in certain parts of indonesia you're probably gonna you know so it's an it depends question all right it depends question for my setup what i'm doing now for smooth roads here in asia a little bit of gravel here and there that's fine all right that's fine um but yeah i'm using 25 mil tires and 28 on the front. So that generally shows you what I'm sort of writing I'm doing. Hopefully that answers the question. If in doubt, go stronger. If in doubt, go lighter. 
it depends on what sort of ride you're doing, how heavy you are, what sort of rider you are, your experience level, etc. Hopefully the video wasn't too confusing. If it was or wasn't, either way, give it a thumbs up if you found it enjoyable. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you have any comments or questions, hit us up down below. We'll see you next video. Cow the fuck up.